In the previous video, we have designed a concurrent system purely based on messages to avoid any multi-threading issue by design. Moreover, as each component in this system remains single-threaded, we keep any complexity caused by concurrency out of our application logic. But how can we scale such a system without mixing in other threading models and so potentially break the thread safety of our design? The basic concept how to achieve this we will explore in this video. Let's go! Here is what we have achieved so far. The orchestrator is a stateful component managing multiple jobs and their states. The data collector component is collecting data relevant for processing a job, but as it takes longer, it runs concurrent to the orchestrator to not block processing of other states of other jobs. Both components own a message queue and only communicate by enqueuing messages into each other's queues. This ensures that each component is executed only by one thread at a time. So far, so good. Now let's imagine the orchestrator receives multiple job requests at once. In the current design, the data collector is executed independent from the orchestrator, so in principle the orchestrator could process other jobs concurrently. But the data collector itself performs the data collection sequentially due to its message queue. In this test case we set up the system, create a variable number of job IDs, for which we then create job requests, and pass those on to the orchestrator. Finally, we verify the processing of the jobs by evaluating the log created. Let's set up this test case for four jobs and execute the test and see what happens. If we inspect the output of the test, we can clearly see that each job is processed by the data collector agent one after another. We see job one, second, third, and finally the fourth one. But if an agent itself is single-threaded, which means only one thread at the time executes the code of that agent, how can such a system scale? Just using a task of the task parallel library or another thread to do the actual data collection asynchronously is not a good idea. At best, this just makes the code more complex as now two threading models have to be understood and carefully maintained over time. At worst, the other threading model breaks the thread safety of the agent threading model and so we can no longer avoid multi-threading issues by design. The obvious consistent answer is, we need more agents. Before we deep dive options to scale the data collector, let me give you a short summary on the updates applied to the code base since the previous video. As you probably already noticed, all classes implementing iAgent are named Agent. Furthermore, the handling of messages have been simplified as the abstract agent provides the receive API, which allows registering a particular callback for a particular message type. The abstract agent locks unknown messages instead of throwing not supported exception and catches all exceptions during message processing and locks errors instead of failing. For more details, check out the history of the Git repository. The link is in the description below the video. Without further delay, let's scale the data collector agent by spawning new child agents. Let's start by creating a copy of the original data collector agent. And we rename this copy to data collector worker agent. And of course, we rename the class as well. Let's go back to the original data collector agent and remove all the code which is dealing with the actual collection of data. Now whenever this agent receives the collect data command, it spawns a new agent and forwards this command to this agent as well. The worker agent receives that command and collects the actual data and once finished, it returns that data to the original data collector agent through a response message. Let's remove all the error handling for now. We will address this in the next step. A new message we will call data collected event. Let's quickly clean this code up. And as this event is just a simple data structure, we can skip all the code and just use the new record type from .NET. Let's go back to the original data collector agent and register for this new event. We called it data collected event. Let's create that method. And when we receive this event, we want to do two things. We want to stop the worker again, and we want to forward the response, the collected data, to the original requester of this data collection task. We stop the worker by just sending the poison pill. We send here the poison pill instead of calling the stop API because the stop API would wait until the worker is really finished. And here we feel it's just sufficient to trigger the shutdown and move on. Now when it comes to sending the original task completed event to the requester of this data collection, we have a problem. In this event handler, we don't know which agent was the original requester. We could make the assumption that there is just the orchestrator sending those collect data commands, but that would be a design smell. Instead, let's remember each request, its requester and the worker we started to process it. Therefore, we create another small class and we also need a list to remember those requests. We need to instantiate the list 
And whenever we receive the collect data command and we start a new worker, we create such a request and remember it in our request list. So the requester was the sender of this command and the worker is obviously the worker. Now, when we receive the data collected event, before sending the poison pill to the worker agent, we pick the original request, we remove the request from the list and send the original task completed event back to the requester. And finally, we send the poison pill to the worker to shut it down again. Okay, let's run the tests again and see what happens. Test is green. Great. Let's inspect the output. Looking at the output, it seems that multiple data collector worker agents process multiple jobs in parallel. But as we can't identify the individual worker agent, it's not so easy to interpret the output. So let's improve it by giving each data collector worker agent a name. So we add another parameter. We need a member. We set it in a constructor. And we use it for this output here. Now we need to change the data collector agent and we generate a name for each data collector worker agent by just introducing a sequence. And from the sequence, we generate the name. Now let's run the tests again. If we now look at the output again, we can clearly see how multiple data collector agents process multiple jobs in parallel. So the data collector agent together with the data collector worker agent scales. Great. But what happens if the data collector agent gets a poison pill while it is actually waiting for a worker to finish. The data collector agent will certainly shut down, but what happens to the worker? It will probably never shut down because there's no other agent sending that worker a poison pill. That's probably a good point in time to add some lifecycle hooks to the base class, the abstract agent. So let's go to the abstract agent and we will introduce a hook which gets called before the agent stops. We call it pre-stop and we make it a protected virtual method which can optionally overwritten by any derived agent. To make this hook symmetric, let's add a post start hook as well. And this will obviously be called once an agent got started. Now we go back into the data collector agent and we overwrite the hook. And when this agent is about to stop, we want to stop any worker which might still be alive. Okay, the life cycle of the worker agents have been cleaned up as well. And if you are still there, then please push that like button now to motivate the YouTube algorithm to spread this video to a bigger audience and consider subscribing to support the channel. Thank you. Let's move on. Looking at the current scaling solution, we have to admit that it is probably a bit too naive. All resources are limited and oversubscription will finally decrease performance. This is true to CPU as well as to IO. So whatever the data collector worker agent does, scaling without limits is not a good idea. To improve our current design, there are basically two approaches. Approach number one, we only start a worker if a maximum number of workers is not exceeded and stop each worker once it returns the result. Approach number two, we set up a pool of workers and assign work once a worker is free. Let's start by exploring how approach number one would look like. As we no longer want to start a new worker immediately when we receive the collect data command, we have to remember the command and the request. And for the same reason, we have to make the worker an optional property. Let's also add a property to indicate whether a worker is processing this request. Now when we receive a collect data command, we first create the request and provide the command instead of the worker. We still add the request to our list of open requests. And then we have to check whether we can start a new worker immediately because the maximum number of workers is not exceeded. Of course, we still have to define max worker. And for now, we just set it to two. And of course, we have to pass on the request. Now let's create the start worker method. When we finally start a worker, we send the task started event to the requester. We set up a new worker agent as before, and we forward the command. Finally, we associate the worker with our request object. When we later receive the data collected event, we still want to find the request based on the worker which sent that event. We remove the request from the list. We notify the requester about the collected data and send the poison pill to the worker to stop it. Finally, we have to check whether there is any request ready to be processed. And if so, we can just start a new worker because obviously just one worker got stopped. So we can start a new one and we are still below the limit. That's it. Now let's run the tests and see whether we have the expected degree of concurrency. Okay, the test is still green, that's good. Let's inspect the output. 
As we can see, the maximum amount of worker agents running in parallel is two. Here we have zero and one. And as soon as one agent is stopped, another agent is started. Same with the second agent. And finally, all the jobs are processed. So far, so good. This approach works well if the creation of a new agent is rather cheap. But let's imagine the creation of an agent is expensive, because during initialization it needs to read some configuration, connect to some database, or perform any other heavy operation. In such a case, we should probably rather use a pool of already initialized agents and distribute the work. So let's move on to approach number two. Now that we want to maintain a pool of worker agents, we need two lists and two data structures. The request data structure just remembers all data relevant to a request. So let's remove this. And we create a new data structure, which is used to build up the pool of workers. And that one will also remember the request, which is currently processed by a particular worker. Let's turn this into a queue and add a list for the worker pool. We need to initialize the new list. And now when the data collector agent gets started, we want to immediately start all the workers and so fill up the pool. So we will override the already introduced post start hook. We have to adapt the pre stop hook, which is now no longer processing the requests, but actually the pool of workers. And of course, we also have to change what happens when we receive a new collect data command. And what we will basically do is just create a new request and enqueue it. And then we will check whether we can dispatch this request to any free worker by calling dispatch next request, a method we will define right now. When this method gets called, we first check whether there's any request to process. Next, we will check whether there's any free worker. And if we have found both a request and a free worker, we will dispatch this request to the worker and associate this request with the worker. And we also inform the requester of the original command that the processing of this request is now started. This method is no longer needed. And finally, we just have to change what happens when we receive the response of the worker, which is the data collected event. So from the sender, we have to find the worker in the pool so that we can send the response to the actual requester. We will then set the active request to null as the request is successfully processed. And finally, we will call this patch next request to check whether there's any new request to be processed. And that's it. Now we have a pool of workers instead of recreating workers whenever we get a new command. Let's run the test and see whether we still have the expected degree of concurrency. Okay, something we forgot to clean up. Right, this one is no longer needed because we give the name already to the worker when we create it. And let's run the tests again. Okay, the test is green again, and if we now inspect the log, we see again that only two jobs are processed concurrently, and that we constantly use the same agents, the same workers, which is number one and number zero. Up to this point, we have ignored the error handling. The orchestrator would basically handle it, but the data collector no longer sends the task failed event. Instead, all exceptions which are potentially thrown during data collection are just caught and locked by the abstract agent. I have prepared a test case to show the problem. In this test case, I create a specific job ID, which is known to the worker agent, which is obviously only done for testing purpose. If the worker agent receives a request for that particular job ID, it throws an exception. The test case later on verifies that the data collection failed information is written to the log file. Let's run the test case and see what happens. The test is hanging. This is because as the worker agent throws an exception, it doesn't inform the data collector agent that the processing has finished or failed. And so doesn't the data collector agent inform the orchestrator that the job has been processed completely. And so finally, also our test case does not know that all the jobs are processed and it's just waiting. Let's abort the test. To fix this problem, we will introduce a concept called supervision which means a child agent knows about its supervisor and any kind of problem gets reported to the supervisor. In professional actor model frameworks like acre.net, there are various supervision strategies like escalating the problem to the next supervisor, retrying things or restarting the agent and probably many more. In this tutorial, we want to keep the concept simple, so we will only support the supervision strategy of escalation and we will directly build it into the abstract agent. Therefore, a child agent needs to know its supervisor. And as not all agents are children, we will also support a constructor which doesn't take any supervisor. When a supervisor is provided, we will remember it. 
And when we process a message, we will take the existence of a supervisor into account. So here we will request the derived class to handle the received message. And in case of an exception, we so far only locked an error. Now we will check whether we have a supervisor. And if there is one, we will send a new message to it, which will contain the message which we tried to process and the exception which got caught. Let's generate that type and again simplify the code. Now in the data collector agent, we have to handle this message. So we register another event handler. And when we receive this message, we will inform the original requester of that request about the failure. And of course, we have to clean up the state of that particular worker and check whether we can dispatch the next request. One last thing is missing to make this work. When we start the data collector worker agent, we also have to pass the data collector agent as supervisor. Now let's run the test case and see whether the error handling works as expected. Okay, the test is green. And if we inspect the log, we see that the event handler for handling failed tasks was executed in the orchestrator. We are done. We have extended our design to scale without breaking the concept of just having one thread executing the code of an agent. With this enhancement, we definitely got closer to the actor model. And as already mentioned in the previous video, this code is just for educational purpose. So please use a battle proven actor model framework for a real project. And if you want to know which other benefits immutable data structures have, other than also avoiding multi-threading issues by design, then watch this video next.